Right. Um, our, our, our next speaker is from Sweden. Um, Charlotte Hellman will uh, tell us about how her father, she and her father, started a foundation to do something back to the sport she loves so much and the boats she loves so much. Her foundation has supported over 40 projects um, in classic boats, but yards, magazines. Um, I can tell her, well, no, let Charlotte. Please, would you take over from here? <laughs> My name is Charlotte Hellman, and we will be going to Sweden. Uh, and in November, one of the organizers, Kim Wekström, came to Stockholm to talk to me, and we met at the National Maritime Museum. And I said, I, well, I will talk about Princess Varnovich and the project. And he said, no, we want to hear about your family. And I said, no, we want to remain unknown. But that's when I found out that Kim is a journalist, and I believe him to be an excellent one, because by the time the museum was closing, I had agreed to everything. So, welcome to Sweden. We will start by travelling south to a very small town, overlooked, I'd say, Oskarsam. It takes about three and a half hours going from Stockholm, and about an hour before you actually arrive in Oskarsam, you pass Gamleby. And all of you who know about Tora Holm and his father and his brother, you can at least salute him when you pass, preferably stop. I will talk a little bit about the yard later. You also pass Vestervik, which is very close to Gamleby. And I would mention the archipelago between Vestervik and Oskarshamn. You see the tip on, of the island Öland, and it's about 18 nautical miles between Oskarshamn and Öland. And I will tell you about an island. This is Mr. Hult archipelago. This, if, if most people sail down from, from Stockholm, they know about St. Anna, they know about Schust, never heard about Mr. Hood. So you have the place pretty much to yourself. If you like to navigate, you're in for a treat. <laughs> the island, Blåjungfrun, the Blue Virgin, is about two-thirds uh, between Oskarshamn and Öland, uh, about 11 nautical miles. She is blue. She's absolutely blue, dark blue, light blue. It varies because of the temperature and the weather conditions. If you're a witch and you live in a Nordic country, this is where you go, this is where you go on Monday, Thursday. The Thursday, not this coming week, but next week, because that's the Thursday that it initiates Easter. You go by broom and to cavort with the devil. And going by broom might be your safest option because you have the Baltic, the, all, all the way from the Baltic, the Baltic Sea, all the way you have the swells and the surges. Uh, I've never been during Easter, uh, so I, I don't really know about the, my broom capacity, but it's very well worth visiting. But in the olden days, it was said you shouldn't go too close because you will get bad weather. And my, so my advice to you is actually, if you know, if, try to keep to that distance that she still remains blue because amazingly enough when you come closer you see that the trees are actually green uh, but she's amazing she's got caves labyrinths it's completely magical it's something to do with the light highly recommended Oskarshamn has always been a port town uh, the lower picture is Oskarshamn in the 1900. Uh, nowadays, of course, people who come to Oskarshamn, they go there to visit the other island, Gotland, uh, with Visby. So they never stop, uh, which is a pity, because if you are interested in boats, the maritime history is so well worth to, to, to stay for a few days. So now I will introduce you to my father. Other, others come here to talk about Harrishoff, Olin Stevens. I get to talk about my family. Uh, this is my father, uh, Bure Hellman. Um, when he, he was born in 1936 and he wanted to become a sea captain. But in 1932, his fate was already destined because my grandfather started a company producing envelopes. And um, he did that, and um, that, that very much becomes, if it's a family company, it becomes 
your reality, it's, it's your word, your world. Uh, so when I was leaving home, my father said, well, you're supposed to send your children off with a few words of advice. So I say to you, you should never pay your bills when you first get them. You should always wait for one, preferably two reminders, because that would take more envelopes. <laughs> so, of course I said, what, what if they aren't ours? What if we haven't made them? And he said, that is beside the point. You will focus on the industry. And I want you to keep that in mind, the industry, because this is what I'm going to talk about here today. My father um, grew up, he, he, I, I was, actually I meant to, to tell you something here. Uh, it says FEP president. What he did was, even though he wanted to become a sea captain, he built one of the very most modern envelope factories in Europe. He became the president of the European Federation of Pro Producers of Envelopes. That consists of 14 countries and imagine 14 countries, several companies in, in every country, 14 different country cultures that you need to make work together. Um, so he did that, and, and he was the president for most of the 90s, a big chunk of the 90s anyway, while still building our company. And at the same time, this was his love and the passion. I only show the two first boats. The dragon was his very first, and of course with two children in diapers, um, and we had to leave the dog ashore, we needed a bigger boat. So when I was about five in 1969, we got Ilana, which is where well, I consider I grew up on her. My father would like me to say that I grew up in the dragon because that would be more Spartan. <laughs> it's nothing to do with you know, the New Yorkshire men of uh, Monty Python, very much like that. Um, but I promised Kim, my family, this is my brother, Jan, he's a musician, the black sheep of the family, very early adopter when it comes to technical stuff, so he started paying his bills electronically, uh, at least 10 years before everyone else. So. I'm a bookbinder, and I'm also a psychologist. Oskarshamn is a town that wood and paper has always been uh, a pinnacle, and whenever I go and meet boat builders, and I say I come from Oskarshamn, they, they always talk about Bouman's Fabrik, where the veneer was made. I will talk about Princess Varnavit's uh, interior later, and we do not quite know, but I still hope, that they were made with the veneer from this particular factory. This is what I saw every day on my way to school, those huge logs, they still show me, when I, when I visit, the mahogany that they bought there. The company folded in 2008. Um, we also have a museum. Uh, one of Sweden's most famous wood sculptors, uh, Döde Hultan. Uh, it's a very nice museum, and it's adjacent to our maritime museum. So you get two for the price of one. And I will introduce you later to the former head of the National Maritime Museum in Stockholm, who has appointed this the third best in Sweden. You have Gothenburg, Stockholm, and Oskarshamn. And uh, it's with the ports and the ships has always been part of our history. So we have the long sofa, and it's from, from the, I think, 1860s or something, it's 72 meters. It was said to be the longest in the world, but someone in America decided to buy one, build one, three times as long. Uh, but what you did was, if you, your husband, your father was out at sea, this is where they sat, waiting. Uh, so it's still, it's, it, it's all, it's all there, the, the heritage, the cultural heritage, if you know where to look for it. For some people who live in Oscar Sound, it's just a sofa. Uh, I'm going to briefly mention the Oscar Sam Cog. You know about the, the, the Cog uh, from, from the 13th century? There are only four found in Sweden, uh, and the one in Oscar Sam is the only one that's been salvaged. It's the one in best condition. Uh, my father was involved with this during the 80s, and he tried again in the, around 2014 because no one will build a museum for it. It's there, 
it's watered or whatever they do to, to keep it in shape, but no one is interested. I think it's the oldest shipwreck we have in, uh, in uh, Sweden, and no one knows about it. And I would come back to that one in a little while. My father, because I, I promised Kim I'd talk about how come you start a foundation. My father, uh, always very interested in the sea, uh, he was allowed as, as a teenager to come with the ice-breaking steamship Nalle, and he never forgot about that. So he was looking for her, or him, and found him in Copenhagen, where she was a houseboat. Uh, that's what they pick up. Uh, but in 2000, uh, he managed to buy him back. Uh, they put in more than 50,000 hours. It's a teamwork. It's only my father you see there with, with, the, with the mask. Uh, and he's gloriously restored. And he turns 100 in, on the 23rd of April this year. Uh, he shares his birthday with William Shakespeare, just so you know. The, that's, that's stuff that writes their beautiful history. So that was the first. Then after that, my father said to my brother and I, I've heard, I have put in my will that I want you to donate a rescue boat. And we said, no, no, do it now. Why? Otherwise, we'll get all the credit. Why wait for it? So in 2001, Rescue Bura arrived. And then he, the, the, the rescue runner, so he was amassing a, a small fleet. And we didn't quite know how big that was until he said, I want to retire. I want us to sell the company. This was always a family company um, because he was about to turn 70. So in 2006, um, very late or early 2007, the company was sold. And then, because as, every, as all good children, you, you leave your, your parents to get on with it. You know, you don't really listen when they talk. Uh, so it was only when we had sold the company that we realised that our father had amassed a collection of boats because of... Oscar Sam being a town with plenty of boat builders, uh, he had tried to assemble one of, from each one. Um, and of course he kept that um, at a factory and now it was sold and they very kindly said you can keep it here for two years or three years but you can't keep it here forever. And so he built a museum. And so the Boat and Engine Museum was opened in 2009. He gave it to the Maritime Association in Oskarsan, who run it. And this, I'm glad to see. This is Hans Lennart Olsson. I talked about him being the former head of the National Maritime Museum. This is the first time we met him. That's my dad. Uh, and uh, he... He, he's got a, a, an important role to play when I start talking about Princess Farnaby. You have the interior here, and sometimes it feels like uh, the glorious parts come to visit once again. So, uh, in 2014, my father said, uh, I think we should start a, a foundation. I think we should try to do our bit to save uh, a cultural heritage that is, has been sadly overlooked. Um, we did that, and we have the three different, you know, the charter, the humanitarian causes, the culture causes, and wooden boats. And you will see that we have nothing here that says we're going to raise a 12 meter, we're going to run a 12 meter, because that was never in the cards. Uh, we had heard about Princess Varnavit, but that was absolutely not uh, something we intended to, to do on that scale. You, the boats I showed you earlier, were, I mean, Ilana was 30, a 30-foot 30 boat. That, that's what I come from. That's what, what I feel comfortable with. Uh, but I, because it has meant so much to our family, the sea, being near the sea, being on the sea, if you can 
combine a humanitarian course with something with the sea, the culture course with something with the sea. So we do support some uh, books being written about shipyards or, or designers. But I would like you, I would like to tell you about School to Home Foundation for people with spinal injuries, started by the doctor, Klaus Hultling, who was injured himself uh, when he, he was just about to turn 30. Some people can only move their arms. Some people can only move their legs. Some can move neither arms nor legs. And they maneuver the boats by blowing or ex either inhaling or exhaling into two different straws. One that manages the steering and one that manages the sail. And I think that is so amazing and we are so proud uh, to be a, a sponsor because this summer there are, for the first time ever, um, people with damaged spines who will sail throughout. They will start in Arholma and, and go to Lansold, which is a very outer archipelago of Stockholm and they will do it for several days in June and they have adapted a catamaran in order to do it. This is the National Maritime Museum. This is the, the room where I met Kim and the meeting he wants me to tell you about is a meeting that took place in March 2016 where my father, my brother, myself and Hans Lennart Olsson and one of his co-workers sat there to talk about how the National Maritime Museum uh, reason when it comes to listing, because they are the one who can give you uh, a cert certificate that means that you are listed uh, a boat or a ship. And while we were close, the meeting was closing, and we were getting up, and my father turned to Hans Lennart and said, if you ever hear about someone trying to get Princess Svanovit back to Sweden and they need a hand, let, please let us know. And this was March 2016. In March 2017, Hans Lennart brought me and my brother, because my father lives, as you know, in Oskarshamn, uh, to Fisksetra, to Stockholm Sportsnickeri, where we met Andreas Milde and Bobby Cyrus. And um, we talked about um, they, they, they talked about their, their corresponding with the, the late Harry Hyams. He had died a uh, year and a half previously. And that they were the only ones who would be allowed to buy Princess Farnabit. And so we said, OK, um, we can pay for the purchase and the transport back to Sweden, which we did. And in early September 2016, 2017, sorry, 2017, Princess Farnavit, uh, also known as Queen of the Baltic, arrived at Stockholm Sports Nikkeri in Fisksätra. She is, uh, as you, most of you probably know, designed by Gustav Slander. She was built in 1930 uh, at Plums Yard, and she was built the way she was built uh, to really promote sailing and the Swedish craft because the Royal Swedish Yacht Club uh, turned 100 years that summer and they had a jubilee regatta so Princess Farnavit was the one that was going to lure everyone to come and race in Stockholm in Sandham. So here she is. Um, we always thought that someone or a group of people would go, would get together and say, okay, let's start a consortium. We do 10 people, we will raise her, we will do, we, we will use a 12 meter. Um, but no one came. Absolutely no one came forward. And she was sitting there and we thought it was a pity. So our family started talking about what if we make at least a part of that ownership, something where our part could be an altruistically owned one. You could give young people an opportunity to sail on her. So, so we started 
because we wanted the renovation to, to start and to go on. So we started thinking about 25% and then 35 and 45 and no one came, still no one came. And then we thought, ah, we, now we have at least 50%. Let's not bother about owners. Let's only look for donators. Donations with people who share our values, who can use this boat to showcase what this is all about. A, a wonderful cultural heritage that needs to be shown to people who do not, not know about it. Enter this man, Morten Kastenfors. He, until a few weeks ago, he, he was um, the head at Lillebergs Art Gallery. He'd been his huge uh, profile uh, in the art world in Sweden. I met him um, in, on a totally unrelated matter, and because I liked him, he's he has a thoroughly independent mind. He, he's a wonderful sense of humour and is charming. So I I said, I have something very, very interesting and I'd like to show you. And he said, let's bring out the Volvo. So we went to Fisksetra and I showed him, Andreas brought out the, the, the interior, the panels. And he said, and this is what makes him a remarkable person. He said, this is fantastic. We're going to exhibit this at Lillebank's art gallery. 99 people out of 100 would say, oh, this is fantastic you need to show this to the National Maritime Museum. Because even though, I will show it to you in a little while, even though it is art, just because it's inside a boat, it's regarded as a special interest. Most people have, have thought about it this way. With Morton on board, uh, he wasn't actually on board because he, he suffers from terrible seasickness, but he was on board the project. He was very uh, positive. We have, because of Lillemark's art gallery, it belongs to the city of Stockholm, that has, is a very low threshold for people because of the spring salon. Everyone can, can just submit their work. More than 4,000 people, you do not have to be an artist. So everyone knows about Lillemark's. We had a designer, Eva Dalskog, who's designed the panels I'm going to show you. So between February, February and April last year, for 12 weeks, more than 100,000 visitors saw the interior of Princess Svanovit. And I'm taking you there now. This is Erik Oklund, who commissioned Princess Svanovit uh, to celebrate the Royal Swedish Yacht Club. There's a photograph, that's him at the tiller. The man just to the right of him in an overall, that's Tore Holm. You have the replica of the tiller with a bronze swan head. No one knows where the original one got to. Here we have some of the panels. I'm going to briefly... We have Landshut, the lighthouse of Landshut on, on the east coast. We have the, Landshut, uh, the, the lighthouse of Vinya on the west coast, just outside of Gothenburg. We have a cog, the door in the middle. We have a princess and a swan because Eric Auckland was a publisher and he published uh, fairy tale stories illustrated by the Swedish illustrator John Bauer. So, in those times, the publisher had the right to the works. So, so he he could use that whichever way he wanted. I, I don't know if, what do you do when you order a new boat. Uh, in Eric Auckland, uh, he employed the. <laughs> The, the engravers, the, the, the best, um, you have the, have the glass, the porcelain, the cutlery, and everything is hand embroidered. Hand, hand embroidered. You have here, he had, he had three different, he had, he had plenty of more boats, but here is his, oops, sorry, 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 so you, hmm? this one. You have the Scary Cruiser 95 Britmarie, you have the Scary Cruiser 55 Maritana, you have the Six Meter Bisbee, and that's Bisbee number one, not number two, who won the gold medal in uh, Los Angeles, 1932. This is the, her predecessor. In 1920s, 1930s, with the neoclassicism, you have Venus or Aphrodite, depending on whether you speak Latin or Greek. You have Apollo or Apollon, uh, you have Columbus ship, Santa Maria, 
and you have Leif Eriksson's Viking ship. The Viking ship and Santa Maria is just to give you an idea of which league Princess Vanvik belongs to. That's his thinking on that one. I'm going to show you this. Remember, remember the, the, the cog in Oscar Sound? No one in Sweden knows about that. So I said in Oscar Sound, if you could adopt, uh, i.e. pay for the restoration, we, we do that, you, you, you can all adopt, we have still a few panels. If you adopt this one, the, the small sign on board would say Oscar Sam's Kogian, and I will be doing a lot of talking about Princess Vanovic, and I'm happy to include Oscar Sam's Kogian. So they have adopted that one. And this Leif Eriksson uh, has been adopted by Stockholm Sports Nickery, and I think they, they chose the, perf the, the, the best one, because you all see the Viking ship. Fuck, oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you see Sweden? Can you see Sweden? Can you see Norway? Can you see the biggest lake in Sweden? That's Vänern. And the slightly smaller one, that's Vätten. You have Gotland. You have Erland. You have a dot there. That's Oskarshavn. And you have Iceland. You have Greenland. You have Newfoundland. Do I need to remind you that this is a boat interior? It is pretty fantastic, isn't it? This is the second largest national newspaper in Sweden, Svenska Dagbladet. On the culture section on a Saturday, Sunday, 27th of February, they reviewed the exhibition. It's a full page. It's not in Sweden, it's not very uh, it's not very often that you get this, a boat in the culture section. And that is something we are so so proud of. Now, let me introduce you to Princess Vanovit. This is uh, Bagensfjärden, just, out of, uh, just outside of, of Sartrebaden in, in uh, October. We, we think that she's so much more than a boat, and that is saying nothing uh, derogative about boats, but she has this interior. She's also so much than one boat, because we want her to do something that will lift the entire cultural heritage, all the, all, all the boats. We call her all of Sweden's boat because we want her to sail around the coast, to go through Göta Canal, which is a channel uh, where you travel from the east coast to the west coast or vice versa, to tell the people, to show the people who do not even know that these boats exist. There is the Swedish National Heritage Board uh, had recommended to the Ministry of Culture that Sweden increase the protection for the movable cultural heritage. Had Princess, we, we could easily sell Princess Svanovic abroad tomorrow. We could not do that had she been a piece of furniture because that would be the immov immovable cultural heritage and that's protected. They work to get, uh, the National Boat Heritage Association work to get tax deductions for renovation work on classic boats. We don't have, we don't have that. Uh, you can deduct 30% of the work if you do that on, on your house, if you do it on your summer house. You can do that even if your summer house is in Spain and you think, oh, that's part of the EU. But you, you could do that if your summer house is based in Switzerland, which isn't the part of the EU. So had I had a summer house in Switzerland, that would be of concern for Swedish taxpayers, but my work for Princess Svanovic isn't. And that is something we think needs to, to change. We also want, we, princess, we help Princess Svanovic to start a national foundation to provide grants for restoration for works of classic boats, uh, because our family foundation won't be around much longer. And when the day Princess Svanovic is sold, we want every cent to go towards a Princess Svanovic restoration prize. I just very quickly, this is Holmes. Uh, yard in Gamleby. This is the Olson project, Einar Olson and his brother Carl Eric with the international 5.5 meters and um, Olson 38 and all the rest of them. They, the Olson project was started because of the demand from foreign owners, in, in, in US, G Germany. 
We have the, the brothers Ravanis in, in uh, the south of Sweden who won the classic boat renovation prize twice. We have so much excellency, so much interest from abroad and still sadly not at all as recognized in Sweden. With Princess Varnavit, the educational aspect is very important. We invited more than 70 uh, eight-year-olds to come and to spend a day uh, with Princess Varnavit. And um, they all, uh, they learned about the old times ship, ship um, building and you know, was, they used her for different subjects at school. And they also got proof of ownership. They were gifted one centimeter of Princess Varnavit's 27.5 meter tall mast because we want them to feel that this is for them. This is their future. You all know about the, the commercials for, for the very exclusive watches that you don't, put, you don't really own it. You merely look after it for the next generation. And that is true when it comes to these boats as well. I would like Princess Varnavit, in order for her to really fulfill the potential to be Sweden's most well-known boat, maybe with the exception of the Vasa ship. It's a very, very, very nice museum. And uh, so we need something to measure Princess Varnavit against. We've already outsailed her. We did that. Uh, <laughs> and so... We, Princess Von Viet has got more and more well-known. We, we launched her on 29th of June. She sailed in October. But already before the launch, it turned out Princess Von Viet was more well-known than we had realised. There was a British multinational company that got in, in touch and they were not happy. Princess Von Viet was built in 1930. I want to remind you of that. Princess Yachts Limited are a, they're a registered trademark and they believe they are entitled to the word princess in a name. So Princess Varnavit, they, they, I, f I find this re really hard to believe, but they have a law firm in Britain, they have one in Sweden. It's been going on since June last year and I find the notion that Princess Varnavit doesn't have the right to her own name is sim it's simply beyond me. So the struggle still goes on because we will not remain, rename her. This is Nya Jugosvarvet at Jugorden in Stockholm. That's an area that was meant to become flats. It was saved. It's a lovely place. We have Skeppsholmen in uh, Stockholm, Råseglarhuset, with Ship Chandler, they're now facing a 50% increase of rent. We have Helena Boys, Port uh, Helena Boys Port Club in Stockholm. There were politicians who wanted to make a bicycle lane in parts of that, because we all ride bicycles on water, don't we? So uh, apparently it needed to go there. I, I show you these images because when I say to make Princess Varnavit relevant for a nation, it's not that I think that Sweden will care about an international 12 meter yacht, even though she's the longest 12 meter ever built. These are questions that concern us all. What kind of society what do we want to live in? Do we need to push this outside? Do, this is Nala again. In, in a few years' time, there probably won't be many people with, with a steam certificate. We can't run the steamboats. Are they to be scrapped? We all know about different towns and cities where they build housing on, directly on the quayside. And people think that steamboat is smelly and is loud. So they have to move sometimes to a different, different town. And I think these are questions that we really need to work with uh, on a much larger scale. Uh, I, I know you're all interested in classic boats, but I think that we need to work together with people who renovate the buildings and, and um, 
I'm going to, we're nearing the end, but I get to my favorite part because most people quite widely, quite, quite wisely, do not own a 12 meter yacht, but most people do own a pen. And the pen is said to be mightier than the sword. Uh, I think so. This is a pen, Ballograph, it's a Swedish pen. It's sadly unknown in Sweden that it is actually a Swedish pen. The click, foundation, the click function is guaranteed for life. You can write almost five nautical miles, 8,000 meters with this one. The cartridge is replaceable. It, cost, it, was, it was launched in 1940s. Um, it's, it's huge, it's export throughout the world. Australia is a very big market. I've never been to a conference or a hotel in Sweden where there is a, where there is a Ballograph pen. Because Sweden, we, this is not only Sweden's only pen maker, it's the only one in Nordic countries, one of the very few in Europe, and still, yet, Sweden is the world's largest importer of cheap plastic pens. And that is saying something. And that is something people can relate to. Why? why? What kind of values have we lost that we don't even know about it? The, the environmental issue is, is but one. Bort Klassiker, the two last issues, uh, you, we, we have brought it over from Sweden to give it to you here today. I saw some of them out there. We started that magazine because we figured that people who visit Princess Varnavit, who become interested, are, they will not go home and become members in, in any of their associations or societies. They, if they become interested, it's so much easier to buy a magazine. We see too that is available in the largest newspaper um, shops, so that they, they um, and we want it to be available to each and every one. We want it to be a handsome magazine because, let's face it, it's usually the man of the family who, who reads it. But I grew up surrounded by, by different magazines, some I never opened, uh, some I read from cover to cover. And we would like the rest of the family to at least open it. Uh, and um, it's the only one, it's, it's for the Nordic countries, so, so we have Kim Wexstrom wrote about the symposium in the last issue. I wrote about sailing with Princess, on Princess Varnavit in, in the last one before that. Uh, and we brought it over. If you want to script, subscribe, you find all the details inside. If you don't understand Swedish, you can, you're still allowed to take your coffees because the pictures are really, really nice. And I hope you will enjoy them. We're nearing the end. Um, so let's bring back the envelope and talk about money. This is Sweden's by far most famous envelope. It contains the details of your pension. You, that's the statement you get, your future pension. Yes, of course we made it from the start. Um, you realize, of course, that the envelope industry, and I'm not talking about emails now, I'm talking about you know, in four years, it's not a business, an industry where you make money. That my father managed to do that is down to one thing, the quality of the envelope. The quality, and as end users, you'd be forgiven because you think, well, I ripped them over, I ripped them open and I chucked them. But that's as end users. It's precision work when you, because an envelope, you very, very rarely get one that's empty. And the things that goes inside are put there by machines. So every, this is micro millimeter. With quality, you make millions and millions and millions and you are, you're allowed to charge a little bit more. And um, we were never the big company. We at a very, at a, when we were the, at our, our biggest, we had about one third of the Swedish market, but we were considered the best. And the beauty is always in the details. Uh, someone who was very interested in my father's approach to making business asked him to write a book. It turns out to be a, bo a booklet because my father, <laughs> and we, no one in the Hellman family has ever been to any business school. Uh, and he only had three rules. And um, it's, 
So it is very much down to what the gut feeling. That's really how, how he did what he did. I quite often get the, the question or hear the statement, it must be very expensive renovating Princess Varnavit. I have never, ever heard someone say to me, oh, you're so lucky, you get to work with your hobby, when I say I'm a psychologist. When I say I'm a bookbinder, I hear that a lot. And why is that? So when I hear it must be very expensive, I say, no, it, well, it's not cheap. She's a very, very big boat. But I want the people working on her to be able to live on, on their craft. I mean, what should we do without them? So it's a, Princess Von Witt is a celebration to what Plume and the other yards were doing 100 years ago. But Princess Von Witt is also a celebration that we have that capacity in Sweden today. We were criticized for not sending the panels off to Estonia, they have excellent craftsmen there, to have them renovated because we would have saved a lot of money. But it's not about that. Objects alone do not make a cultural heritage. If you can't look after it, if you do not have the knowledge, and once, once it's gone, it's gone. I am a craftsman and I say that with an extraordinary pride and even a lot more pride of that than being a psychologist, because it's harder. It's harder to, to bind books, uh, I find. Princess Von Witt Foundation owns the boat, and we have a foundation so that everyone can see that this is something that's altruistic, it's open to everyone. We have, you can buy one centimeter of the mast, you can adopt one of the panels, you will get absolutely nothing when she's sold, we will not chop off the mast, chop off the mast. It's all about donations, it's all about doing this together. Uh, I personally think of her as a rescue boat. I won't be on board, but she will be out there doing what she needs to do. When will Princess Von Witt sail again? Well, she, she looks good on the outside, she's still empty, she lacks uh, an engine. Um, but we have decided to launch her this summer because we want to be at the Centennial City Hall Regatta. that uh, takes place in the centre of Stockholm in the middle of June, 16th to 18th. And the building you see, you might recognise it from the Nobel um, dinners, that the City Hall of Stockholm turns 100 this summer. Uh, there was a regatta in 1923. There will be one again this year. And when they called me, I said they wanted Princess Von Witt to be there. And I said, Princess Von Witt is exactly where City Hall was 100 years ago. She needs money. What they did with the City Hall, the City Hall could, or rather the City of Stockholm, could only afford Black, uh, black, a black roof, and Stockholm didn't want that. So they have copper plates. You could buy a copper plate for Swedish, uh, 25 Swedish kroner, you got your name engraved. And in Stockholm, see, the city hall is so beloved because your grandparents, people talk about that. My grandfather bought a plate for our family. We have our family name up there, and that is exactly how we want Princess Von Witt to be viewed. So this is really the end of my story about Princess Von Witt, but we will have a world premiere here now, a teaser. It's only a teaser. The actual film is six, six minutes long. Uh, the teaser is a minute and a half. It's a collaboration between Princess Von Witt uh, and Touchwood, John Lammers from Buren's comp company. So I will just... Can everyone see, or should I move to the side? Okay, is that all right? I will press it, I'll press it now. <laughs>